So I think we are ready, we can start, right? So, uh, first of all, as usual, a, a few announcements. I mean, uh, things uh, which are quite obvious, but in any case, um, you have the schedule for this week. Uh, well, this week is mostly over, but next week, okay? And you see that uh, this week, uh, today, we are going to talk about context uh, and then uh, the React router. And as usual, we will see a few examples. And then next week, there will be lecture on Monday and Thursday, okay? So no lab on Monday, but there will be the usual lab on Tuesday, okay? About what we are going to see today. Uh, by the way, when, we, when I'm talking about the labs, uh, I mean, my colleague told me, uh, I mean, the attendance is not so high. I mean, we don't really care. It's something that helps you, uh, it's supposed to help you, okay? To develop something during the, the course of the course, okay? So while we are explaining things, you have the opportunity to go in the lab and try things and, uh, you know, get help in case it's needed. So we are going in the lab in any case, so try to exploit it as much as possible, okay? Um, I mean, we, we don't want to uh, make it mandatory. Well, we will not do it, make it mandatory for this course in any case because we decided decide these things at the beginning of the course. We don't change while we run the, the course, okay? But in any case, it's something that, uh, I mean, probably wouldn't help that much. I mean, just remember that you have only three weeks to, to from when we publish the text to from to when uh, you should submit the uh, assignment, okay? So you cannot develop everything in three weeks and learn everything in, in three weeks, okay? So you need to have something, uh, I, I don't want to say ready, but uh, at least you tried a few of these things uh, that we explained during the lecture and you already know more or less how things work and then from that point you can start and develop your stuff in, in three weeks, of course not full time, I'm not talking about full time, okay? And by the way, in those three weeks we will, you will not be able to seek for help that much because uh, the, the labs will be finished, okay? Especially if you are not uh, uh, planning to submit it for the first uh, uh, exam seat, okay? Um, of course, there's the Telegram channel. We will do what we can do to answer your questions. But one thing is, you know, come into your laptop and see what you're doing and trying to help there. And one thing is, see and is to see, you know, a screenshot of a piece of code without knowing anything else and, you know, give a, an advice or suggestion. Okay. Um, okay. So. Uh, I did this uh, introduction just to remind you and especially your colleagues that may be, uh, you know, following, attending the class through the video lectures or they are not coming to the class, uh, that, uh, you know, you should try to exploit the resources of the course uh, as much as possible while it's being uh, delivered, okay? I know you are here, so you're probably not the, you know, the people to address, but maybe you know colleagues, so you can refer these things to them. Okay. So today uh, we, are, we are going to talk uh, briefly about context. We will see an example which is already prepared. It's already on the GitHub. And uh, so we just try to, uh, to use it and see how it works. And because this is more uh, like a, a utility fun uh, function that you can use in, in your application to simplify passing properties around, okay? So it's not really fundamental as the rest that we will see in the course like the router and then the, the life cycle of the components and all this stuff, all the rest of the stuff. Okay, so if you don't have context in the exam, just to be clear, no problem, okay? But it, it's something that is supposed to help you in case um, you need it. So, um, you remember that in um, React components, uh, there's a uni unidirectional flow of information. It basically starts from the up component, that is the first one in the root. Uh, in, it's the root of the tree. And then you pass information through the props, okay? And you already experienced in the lab while programming by yourself or in, in the classroom examples that you need to pass the properties each time 
one component references another component. So if a prop needs to be passed um, through, through all the branches in the tree, from one component to a leaf component, you need every time to repeat the name of the property and the value of the property and so on, okay? So the context, uh, in short, is a way to avoid this uh, passing of properties and just have access to the value of those properties uh, anywhere you need uh, uh, those values uh, by using uh, you know, the solution that we are going to uh, discuss, okay? So uh, it's a sort of uh, global set of properties that are automatically available in any places uh, below where you define the properties uh, and in all components. You just uh, you know, get the reference to this global context and then you retrieve the value of the properties without having to pass properties from one component to its, its child component and so on until where you need it. Okay, so sort of teleporting, teletransport of properties, okay? Uh, why we need this kind of solution? I mean, properties are enough to develop our application, but sometimes there are properties that uh, should be passed around quite a lot. These are examples, like uh, the visual theme. You would like to have a light theme or a dark theme. This applies more or less to all components, so it's a property that should be passed uh, more or less to all components, which are typically the leaves, not just the root, okay? So uh, basically this prop goes around uh, into the whole application. Or when we will see authentication, you have the logged in, logged out state, and you decide to render the components in a different way if you're logged in and logged out. Or maybe the language. Language is another, you know, very global property. You would like to show all the messages in Italian, in English, in another language. And so you need to know which language you should use to show the property and tell the components to use that language and how you tell them with properties, okay? So these are properties uh, uh, that uh, are very well suited to go into a context, okay? But as I told you, in our very simple examples, we don't have so many components, so if you would like to ignore this stuff and just, you know, pass the properties from one component to another, it's still fine. But when you start to have a big application with uh, many, many components and so on, this uh, uh, is going to help you. Okay, so how the context works. Well, basically, there are three ingredients, so three parts. First, we need to define the context. Then we need to say where we provide the information about uh, the properties. And then we need to get the information from the property. So these are the three points. Definition, the provider, and the consumer, okay? Um, and this is the way we address it, and we'll see it in, in the next slides, okay? Um, so, first, definition. It's just a call from React. React dot create context. You import React in your project, as usual, and you have this object, React, where you have a field that is a method that you can call it, you, get, you create a context. The context is an object with two properties, okay? The provider and the consumer. Um, and it represents the value of one state object. So in short, uh, in, this, uh, um, in this context, typically we uh, set a state as the value that we would like to distribute, okay? Because if it's a constant value, that means that if you would like to change the value, you need to change the source code of the application. So it's not that useful, okay? You can do that, but it's not that useful. Typically, you start with the state and you distribute the value of this state in the form of props to all your components, okay? Um, okay, um, the identifier that we choose here, so the X context is a name that we choose ourselves for our application, is uh, the, the name that we need to remember to handle this co uh, context, and also, Remember, there can be many contexts in the same application. So like we can define one context uh, for the language and one context for the theme and so on, okay? Just for us, I mean, it's just added flexibility, okay? One context is probably enough, but 
in case you need it, in very big application, you can define more. Um, <coughs> okay, so um, uh, this is the definition, so we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll define a context and uh, uh, this, this value uh, can be used and uh, it has an initial value that is this default value that is passed uh, when we define the first time the fact that a context exists, okay? Um, <coughs> so, um, when we create, uh, uh, when we use actually the context provider, if uh, nobody has set a different value, you will get the default value that you uh, used when you create uh, the context, otherwise you'll get the updated value, okay, that uh, somebody has um, updated uh, when using the context, okay? I know it's a bit uh, <laughs> cloudy, let's say, at the moment, but uh, let's see an example. Let's try to create a very simple application. So there's just one button and the context is uh, the language in which we display, uh, display the um, uh, the, the written text on the button, okay? So we press the button and the, the text is translated to English and we press the button and the text is translated to Italian, okay? Of course, a very, very simple example, it's a toy example, so we don't really need the context here, but just to see how the context works, okay? So, we have up, uh, I mean, this is a, a, a very simple example without the context. So, should we create an app like this? We would uh, define a state in which we keep the information about which language should be shown to the user. And then, uh, uh, we use uh, the, the information about uh, the language uh, to decide what to show in the bottom, okay? Actually, you see that we didn't pass the language value as a property of button, okay? That's because now we would like to use the context to pass this information, okay? Uh, at the moment here, it's just, you know, this uh, callback that, uh, that uh, is used to change the language of, uh, the, that is set into the state in the form of the string, English or Italian, okay? So, Let's say that we define a context, so create, create context, okay, which is actually empty as the initial value in the beginning, fine, okay. And we typically define a context uh, in a separate file, but just for convenience, because typically you need to import this uh, definition in many different places around in your application. That's, that's the only reason, okay. And so you import this uh, language context element that you defined, and then you take a provider that is uh, a property of the element, uh, of the object actually, this object that you defined previously. And this uh, component specify, uh, specify um, uh, actually has a value prop uh, that is available to all components below the component uh, that we, uh, where we put this component, okay? So all the consumer, all the components that needs to use the value created by the context needs to be nested inside the um, uh, specification of this uh, provider, which is actually a React component itself. It just doesn't get rendered in the DOM, okay? It's a virtual component like the React fragment and so on, okay? Um, when the value will change, of course, React will take care of re-rendering all the components that use that value, okay? That's the part post of using React, okay? So, in short, we have this uh, language context that we imported, and we create a language context provider here, just below app, so basically it, it is, everything is nested below the provider, okay? So all the rest of the application is nested below the provider. So the welcome and button that we only had two components before. And uh, everything will be able to use this value equal to whatever we would like to set here, okay? 
Here is just a string that was, uh, you know, the, the state that we had before. But uh, remember that here we can use any valid JavaScript uh, um, uh, type. Okay, so we can pass strings, arrays, objects, whatever. Okay, if we'd like to have more than one uh, value, typically you pass an object with different uh, fields, with different uh, properties. Okay? You can even pass references to functions. Okay? And this will be very useful because we can pass uh, callback functions to change the value that is uh, set uh, in the provider. Okay? Okay, so nothing new. I mean, we just added the language context provider around all the objects, all the components of our application, okay? And then we need to use this value. How can we use it? Well, we need to use the consumer component, okay? And in the consumer component, the way in which the value is obtained is through a callback function, okay? Not very convenient. I mean, the, the syntax is quite cumbersome. I mean, it's not so nice to read, okay? But this is one of the options, and there will be another option much more uh, readable uh, that we'll see in a minute, okay? But let's stick with this uh, first option, okay? So we have this provider, and inside the components, so the welcome and button, okay? We need to define a consumer, so a place where we will consume the value, and all the rest below the consumer will be a callback function. So everything will be the return value of a callback function that takes as a parameter the value that we put here, okay? As you can see from this uh, way of writing, it's not uh, so, <laughs> I mean, readable, okay? I mean, of course, uh, there's a consumer, so in short, you can say, well, for each uh, component where I need the, the um, value, the first thing I do is uh, render the uh, consumer component and then write, start with the callback, okay, with the parameter of the callback and do all the rest that I would do normally, okay, that's the idea. Uh, but th there's a better way of dealing with this uh, consumer, um, um, uh, I mean, to consume the value, okay and is using a special hook, that is the use context hook, that has been specifically designed to get this value that is provided by the context provider in a more, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, in, a more e e in an easier way, okay? So in a more readable way. You see the difference in the example. Instead of writing uh, context consumer as a, as a component, so you need to open it, close it at the end, and so on, and define a callback function. You just call use context with the name that you give uh, to the context, and you get the value. And then the value is a variable, as any other variable that you have in the function that defines a component, and you can use it wherever you want. Okay? So, much more readable. Okay? Uh, so, compare this uh, way of writing, so language, use context, the same in all components that need to use it, and then you have this variable, language, you can use it to do whatever you want, okay? If you go back and you see the other option, the other option was like this, language consumer, language, arrow, because it, it's a callback and so on, and then you do the same, but of course much less readable. Okay, uh, so in short, uh, it's always uh, better to use the uh, use context hook when you want to consume the value, okay? Because it's easier to read, that, that's the only reason. Uh, from the point of view of the functionalities, it's exactly the same, okay? Remember that the hook is just for consuming the value so there's no way to create a new context object or create a content provider using hooks. At least for the moment they didn't, <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't create it, okay? But it's also a different um, approach. I mean, the, the provider should have a place inside the uh, virtual DOM of React where you define uh, the context and you say that all the children 
below that place can use the value. Okay, so you need a, actually a component. That's why it's not an hooker, but it's a component. But when you use it, it's enough to say that uh, we have a component uh, that defines a context, so just use that component and get the value, okay? And of course, to create a new context object, well, actually, that's the easiest part, to just you use uh, create uh, context uh, from React. Okay, um, so I, I would say, let's try to have a look at the code. So, in Visual Studio Code, I loaded the context, okay? So that's the context example that you already have on the GitHub. Okay, so in the lecture examples, week number nine, which is our week, you have context, and that's the example here that we are going to see now, okay? So it's already there mm, since Tuesday, I think, a couple of days, okay? So, uh, no, okay, con this app is not related, okay? It was opened for, mm, by, uh, by chance, okay? So that's exactly the same language, uh, the same um, code that we saw on the slide, almost, let's say, okay? Instead of English, it's N and so on, I didn't realize it was not exactly, exactly the same. Okay, but you see there's a new state, there's a state, and there's a provider, and there will be a consumer in the components, okay? So there will be a consumer, actually, not a consumer, but the hook, the use context hook, okay? And uh, there's a, this uh, definition, language context, okay? That is imported from app, but also from the components, okay? And that's why we put it into a separate uh, uh, file because it's easier to import in all the places where we need it, okay? Okay, and let's try the example to see if it works, okay? So, oops. No, I would like to write in the terminal. Uh, but that's a wrong terminal. So, new terminal. Okay, context. No? Ah, I just, again, the wrong one. Terminal. That should be the first. Okay, context. Okay, I already did npm install. Not to lose time here during the lecture, so npm run dev. And let's open the browser. That's how the app uh, looks like. You click and it translates in, e in Italian and you click it translates in English and vice versa, okay? So nothing really special in this app. It could be the first example of using a state, okay? But what is different here is that you, you will see that uh, there's this context provider where you will see that we have two values provided here. So it's an object and there are two values, the language and the callback function, toggle language, so that in any place where you need the value, you also have the possibility to, to call the callback and change the value of the context, okay? So, uh, if you go into welcome, there's a hook that is a context and it gets the value, okay? And the my button as well, it gets the value, and also the uh, callback function because with the button on the on click event we will call the callback function to change the value of the con that we uh, have in the context. You see it's it Italian now we click it and it becomes n English okay e n okay so you can try this example by yourself I mean nothing really difficult to to understand. It's just a way to distribute uh, values around in your application, and you typically, you would like to distribute context. Okay, uh, context, yes, um, states, I mean, React states, okay? Because if you distribute a, context, a, a constant value, I mean, there's no point, I mean, it's a constant value. 
you put it into an include and you include it and you solve the problem without the context, okay? If it's a state, it's, it gets more interesting, okay? You can also have multiple contexts in big applications. I, I wouldn't go into many details here because we typically, one context for us is more than enough, okay? But of course you can, you know, put providers in different places in the, your application tree and the value is available only for the children where you put uh, the provider of the context, okay? And you can use it uh, in the same way with the use context hook. Remember that just that you need a, an hook for each context that you have, okay? Which doesn't mean each variable, just uh, uh, for each context. As we saw before, the value can be an object, so you can distribute more than one value with the same context, okay? Yes? Uh, yes, the main advantage is we don't have to pass uh, through all the components uh, until we reach the component where we need the value. So in, in short, you, what you say, that we don't have to pass it to all the children, okay, on a certain uh, branch, but we can just say use context in the component that uh, we, where we need the value and we use it, okay? without the props in the intermediate components, okay? No, you cannot pass things from children to parents in React. Neither props nor states, okay? Indeed, that's why you always put the state on the top in the tree and you pass callbacks down and you use callbacks to modify values that are uh, at the root of the tree, uh, at the top of the tree, because you cannot pass things back. Yeah, the things are passed only from the root of the tree down to the components below to the children, okay? And the, the, the context is not an exemption to this. If you need it for the whole application, the provider must be at the root of your tree, okay? So it distributes, uh, so it's accessible to all components in your application. Sorry. Yes? I have to uh, place the provider around all the components. Yes. The yes, as we did here, basically okay. before all the components. So around all the components, you need to have the provider because if you have welcome outside the provider, you call the hook and the hook gives you nothing. Okay? Because the hook goes to search you know, the closest provider going up in the tree. That, that's why, okay? Because since you can have more than one context, it needs to have a rule to search for which component, which context you, you should uh, use, okay? Okay, any other questions? In any case, I think uh, you try this example and uh, it will be more or less self-explaining. I mean, this is an example with two, uh, two um, contexts, but uh, I mean, we can just uh, leave it for, uh, for who is interested, <laughs> okay? Uh, changing the context value, I told you, you need to pass a callback. That's the easiest uh, way, okay? And uh, remember that the state is part of the component containing the provider and it's not part of the provider itself because we don't write function context.provider. It's already uh, created by React. It's not our function, okay? It's a component, it's a React component. It behaves like a React component, but we are not writing it ourselves, okay? So the state is part of the component containing the provider, okay? So uh, we cannot put it into the context object as well. So if you go back, you see where the state is? The state is in up, okay? And up is the component that will contain the provider. You see in up, we have the provider. And we also have a state. Actually, it, it would be better to repeat it here probably. I mean, actually here, inside the up, okay? 
You cannot define states outside the component, sorry. Inside here, okay, instead of the three dots. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so that's more or less all. Just a few recommendations as usual. Don't abuse uh, the context in the sense that uh, it's a value that comes into a component, but it doesn't follow the rules of the props. I mean, it doesn't uh, come in as a, a parameter of your function. So in this sense, it reduces the purity of functional components. So the return value of your uh, function component depends not only on props, but now also on context. So it's fine if it's, it's, use, uh, it's limited, okay? So limited to certain important value that needs to be distributed around, and if you pass properties, uh, just uh, reduce the readability of the code, okay? But try not to abuse it, like, well, I forgot to pass a property with, I, I have a global con context, uh, just add this property to the context uh, so I have it available somewhere else, okay? It's not the way in which uh, React should work, okay? Because also passing properties is a way to also, in a certain sense, implicitly document your code. Because if you know which properties your component receives, okay, which property receives, uh, you know uh, more or less what your component uh, is, uh, is doing when you change the values of these properties, okay? If it receives, uh, I don't know, a list, it's probably a component that deals with, uh, you know, showing a list of things and so on, okay? Which just magically takes values from the context, we need to understand, you know, more than just uh, uh, reading which properties should be passed to our component, okay? And of course, don't use it to correct design errors. Uh, and uh, if you find that you miss a property, you go back to your project uh, and think where this property should be passed and you add attributes to your components and so on, and you pass the property as you need, okay? And only, and only if it's a, something that is global, almost global to your application, then uh, it's a, a good time to use the context, okay? Okay, so that's more or less what I need to say about the context. And as I told you, it's not mandatory to use this uh, context because simply uh, we could have passed uh, the same information through properties, okay? Just that uh, if you have, uh, you know, different levels of components, you need to repeat it at every different level, okay? Okay, fine. So that's the, ends the discussion about the context, okay? We don't have a, a lab about context, so in case you would like to try it, you're free to try it but we don't have a specific lab because, I mean, it's not really required as I was saying to you before, okay? Instead, now today we are focusing more on this uh, other aspect which is very, very important, much, much more important than the context, that is the router, okay? So until now, in your React application, in the lab, but also in the application that we developed uh, during the lectures, we only had one page, okay? So we loaded the application and we said, we cannot reload the application, which is still true, but maybe if we can have different views, so equivalent to the different pages that you typically have when you browse the internet and you search for things and so on and you, you go to a website and there, there's a new URL and then another URL for another page and so on, that would be useful. But how can we achieve this objective uh, with single page applications? Well, today we'll, we'll try to do that, okay? Um, so, first of all, in a complex web application, uh, typically you have different views, 
of course, we are developing small applications here in the course because time is limited. But uh, if you think uh, to big applications like, for instance, Facebook, just to take the application that uses React that is uh, the most famous one. You know, React was developed by Facebook to put some order in its uh, web application in short, okay? And you see that in the browser uh, um, URL uh, bar, so this one on the top, where it's, you see localhost, uh, file one, et cetera, with the port. I cannot make it bigger, sorry. But here you can have different values, different addresses, okay? The first part is fixed, facebook.com and so on, okay? But the second part can change and typically corresponds to different pages, okay? Like if you're seeing your profile, if you're seeing the posts, the pages, uh, uh, and so on, okay? And these are what we call views or layouts, okay? Which maybe share some common uh, elements, uh, but also, uh, I mean, they are specific of some something that you would like to show in that uh, in that place, okay? And you may have noticed that uh, a site like Facebook, but also other sites like Google and so on, never reload the page. Okay, that's the idea of the single page application. Never reload the page because reloading the page is a slow process and it impacts on the, um, um, on the user experience. You, you never want to wait, in short, okay? But you also notice that, hopefully, you notice that the URL, so the value in that bar, the URL bar of the browser, changes. So how is this possible? If we change that URL, okay, we write something else, uh, and we press enter, you see that we reload the page. So how can we change the URL and uh, not reload the, the, um, the application? Well, the router, in short, solves this problem and gives, you, gives us a, a standardized way of dealing with this problem, okay? So having pages is also useful for your application to no, um, separate the views and not to fill up your application with uh, states uh, which are just used to decide what to show, okay? Uh, until now, we had an application which is already quite complex, like uh, you remember the answer list? Uh, we, we can open it, okay? Uh, let's open it. So uh, that's the other example I prepared and where we will uh, no, uh, develop npm uh, run dev, okay? That is uh, exactly the application that we had last week. There's no router yet, okay? But you remember that we have a state that allows us to show the form and also uh, it can be reset not to show the form, but also there's uh, another state that handles uh, the fact that we would like to edit something, so there's the edit object and so on. So we already have two states which are just used to decide what to show, okay? And in a complex application, of course, you can have many, many more different views. And I mean, uh, it's not so convenient to keep all the information about uh, what you're showing in states, in React states, okay? If we can assign each view an URL, as it was done in, in the early days of, uh, of the web, okay? Each page has had its own URL, okay? On in, in, let's say, traditional web application where each time you do something and you would like to show a different view, you reload the website, okay? You reload the page. So you do a request to the server and the server gives you back another page, okay? And this corresponds to a different URL, typically. So we would like to have all these advantages, which also allows us, you know, to use the navigation buttons, which should not be, I mean, must not be used in single page applications. When you're dealing with uh, Facebook, uh, Google, and so on, you never press uh, back and forth, okay? But if the application is written in a good way, you can even do that, okay? 
And uh, having URLs is very convenient because they convey information, especially to, devel to the developer, I must say. But also they can be bookmarked. So you can copy the value and put it aside and use this value to access a certain page directly in the web application, if the web application supports it, okay? Um, and so, in short, for us, it will be a, a way to keep uh, uh, a sort of a state uh, of the application that is the state that decides what should be shown in the current view, okay? So indeed, today, we will take our application, which is uh, yeah, this one, and we will create from now one single page. Now there's just one page. You see the, the URL here never changes, even if we press add or edit and so on. So the URL is always the same. We will create three pages. One is already here, okay, it's a list. And the second one will be to add something that basically corresponds to more or less to the state, uh, you know, show form, uh, yes or no. And the third one is for editing the, uh, um, the answer, okay? So it's a view for editing, which is very similar to the, the one for add, okay? But the difference is that we would like to have some more information, okay? And so we can decide what to do now. Okay. Um, so there's plenty of use cases where you should, uh, um, I mean, it's better to use the routes, okay? In practice for the exam, for your application, uh, you will have to use routes. But I must say, not that many, because the application is not that big, okay? Sometimes with two, three routes are enough. Sometimes you need four or five, okay? Indeed, that, that's one of the things on which we evaluate the project, okay? Because uh, deciding which route you, your application should have, it's uh, your implementation choice. You can even have just one route, okay? And put everything into the state as we did until now while developing the application and as you did yourself in the lab, okay? For the films, again, you show the form of the films to add a new film and you just have the state. You don't have a route at the moment. You don't have a different URL, okay? But, I mean, to better organize the application, it's important that we are able to use these routes, okay? So these are just uh, some use cases very common in web applications. Um, okay. Um, okay, one important thing I already mentioned, but I would like to remark is that URLs can be shared, saved, and bookmarked. If I don't have URLs, when I share something like, uh, you know, this URL, localhost and so on, so if it's always the same, it will always land on the first page of your application, okay? It will not be able to load something different from your landing page, so the first page, okay? Of course, I cannot share localhost, but think in terms, in more general terms, Facebook com slash profile slash one, two, three, four, and so on, the number of the user and so on. You share the URL, and if you can access it, uh, you put it into the browser and you can access that page, okay? Uh, so that's very convenient to have URLs also for this reason, okay? Because you can share it, save it, bookmark it. Um, okay. But when we have a URL, uh, URLs, different URLs. Uh, the fact is that we have still have a single page application. So what happens if uh, a user loads a URL, which is not slash, so the, the, the root URL? Uh, I mean, in, in a normal, traditional web application, you go search for the page and load that page. In a single page application, you only have one starting point, which is the app. You know, the, 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 the component uh, with decides uh, what to do with your application. So, in short, every request which is not on the root path, so, you know, uh, you have a root something, a slash something, uh, will always have to return the same exact content, which is actually the same content that we get when we access the slash URL. 
so the, the basic URL, the starting URL. Um, so the one that contains app and so on. Okay? And then it's up to the code, the JavaScript code that is inside app to decide what to show by reading the URL. Okay? And this is the task of the router that we will see today. Um, in a normal web server, you, uh, you need to configure this behavior. But since uh, we use the framework to you know, uh, deploy React when we start developing in React, so it's Vite. You remember that we run npm uh, um, create uh, Vite, uh, et cetera. Vite already configured a development web server where it always serves the same exact content, okay? regardless of the URL. You can put any URL, as you saw before, you see that we can put uh, any URL that you might think, and we al always get the same page, okay? That's a configuration that has been done by Vite that we used to develop uh, our React application, okay? Uh, and what to show is decided by the JavaScript that we load, okay? And of course, uh, with the router that we are going to talk about now. Uh, okay, so how does the React router work? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we need to decide which router to use, okay? And we would like to have a router that is able to modify the value of the URL on the uh, URL bar, uh, in, in the URL field or box, on the top of the browser, okay? So the one that we were seeing before, uh, seeing before, okay? And this luckily can be done, oops, can be done by means of JavaScript because one of the elements which is available through the uh, browser JavaScript environment is also the location. That means the, the value that the browser writes in, in that box, the URL box, okay? And so the, the router should hopefully manage well the value that you write in that box, okay? It manages it for us. Uh, it reads it when it's needed and it, 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 it writes it uh, when we change it, okay? And on the basis of this URL, it decides which component should be shown in the page. So some components will be hidden and some components will be shown. Okay, and when the user clicks on a new URL, it should intercept this request and handle it uh, by itself, okay? So we cannot reload the application because it's a single page application, so you should be able to intercept these uh, clicks, uh, okay? Sort of clicks uh, on links and uh, decide what to do, okay? So, we should always prevent the browser from fetching the next page, so we don't have, we don't want the, the browser to reload the application because it destroys everything. It destroys the, the client state, the application state. And, of course, we instruct the React, React app and so on and the router we, uh, about which component should be shown or um, taken out of the application. This is our recommendation, okay? Uh, there are different router libraries available because they are not part of React, but there's a very, very common one that uh, is uh, used uh, with the React application. It is the React Router DOM, okay? React Router is obvious, DOM, okay? It's because, uh, you know, React can also be used outside the browsers to create the native applications, like on the mobile phones and so on. So DOM means that it's a version for the browser, okay? Um, okay, fine. So this is again, I mean, it's just a package that you install as you installed uh, many other packages, okay? Like the SQLite 3, but that is for the server, but like Bootstrap, Bootstrap icons, uh, uh, what did we install? Uh, well, React, of course. Uh, you just look at the imports, right? Uh, uh, so, oh, these are the imports. Uh, 
the yeah React Bootstrap. Uh, well, more or less, that's all. Okay, and we will add more uh, as we proceed. Okay, so router is uh, um, uh, integrates with the browser's uh, uh, native navigation function. So in short, it handles this uh, URL field where you write the URL and decide what to show. And since it's adapted for React, so the version that we are using is adapted for React, in short, it provides us a few components, React components, that we can use inside our application to decide what to show at which URL and so on, okay? More or less like the context before. It pro it, uh, the context gave us uh, two components, the provider and the consumer. The router gives us more components, like the link, the navigator, the root, routes, uh, browser router, and a few hooks that will be very useful um, in, in a few minutes, okay? So, in short, how can we uh, use uh, the React router? Well, first of all, we need to define a set of routes. So, uh, think in terms of your application, the first thing you need to decide is which routes should I have in addition to the slash one, so the root one that we had until now, basically. So, do we want to have another page for, I don't know, about information, dash, dashboard, or, or as I told you before, for our application, we would like to have a root for add, so we only show the form, and there we can uh, um, add the information of a new answer, or another route for edit, and so on, okay? This, is, this depends on, um, uh, on your design process, what you would like to do, okay? You can try to sketch a structure of, ad, of our application in the beginning. And of course, as usual, uh, you try to develop something and at a certain point you discover it does not work as you expect and maybe you miss the route and you add a new route. Or maybe there's a useless route because you thought it, it should be a different one but in, indeed it's the same and you remove it, okay? So it, it's an at, in, um, iterative process. So you, uh, you start with a certain idea, you implement it, okay? And then you see if it works every time you check it and while you develop, you adjust things uh, uh, if uh, they are not uh, uh, suitable for your application, okay? Like when you program something, okay? You start with an idea, you try to code your idea, and if thing doesn't work or don't work, uh, you know, uh, you change something and you make them work. If you are really, really unlucky, you will uh, rethink everything from scratch because uh, you, you, you made uh, <laughs> big mistakes, but typically, uh, I mean, it's not so difficult to define routes in an application, okay? And by the way, it's one of the things that you, you will need to specify when you submit your project. And one of the first things we will have a look at when we check your project, okay? Uh, the, when you submit your project, uh, you will need to have a, a file, a text file that we can read. And that's the first thing that we read uh, where you specify the routes of your application and the APIs of your web server, okay? For accessing data. And from that, we already have a, a more or less an idea of about how your application works. Because we have an idea of the views that your application has and how you exchange information with the server. That's why they are so important and we require you to write them in a text file, okay? You will have a specification and an example on, on how to submit uh, uh, your exam, of course, okay? If you are just curious, you can go back, you know, with the links to the previous exam of last year. It's not this course, but things will be more or less similar, okay? So, how you specify the routes? Well, there's, uh, there's a component routes that, mm, in which 
you put your route, each one of the route uh, in your application. So they are just components and nested as you might expect, okay? So every single route is nested in a component routes, uh, that means that contains all the, all the routes of your application. And then it's nested inside the router, so it means that those components are special components which are handled by the router and that define what to show depending on the URL, okay? So let's go into a bit more details on how these components work. Uh, well, routers can be defined as functional components, but we'll not see functions because, uh, I mean, not yet, uh, uh, not yet fully supported, so not, not yet working so well. So we will use router components, which are more or less uh, quite intuitive, as you saw before, okay? There's uh, one component, uh, one URL, and you decide what to show in terms of components, okay? So, there are different routers as well. Browser router is the one that we recommend and for the purpose of this course, it's more than enough, okay? Just that, uh, you know, for very, very old browsers uh, that don't support URL very well in terms of accessing the value from JavaScript and so on, there are uh, other routers uh, available, okay? This hash route. But I mean, it's just for, you know, completeness. So we do something like import, browser router, as router, I mean, we just rename it, but you don't really need to do this, this okay? From React Router DOM, and then you use, you use it in your application, okay? Um, the browser router needs some uh, configuration, and that's exactly what I told you before, okay? All paths must be mapped to the same place where you start the whole application code, but this has already been done by Vite, that is the framework that we are using to develop um, uh, with the React, okay? This is just an advice on how to configure an actual web server when you deploy your React application on a real web server, okay? And I hope to have a lecture on this uh, just at the end of the course, okay? So, no, uh, uh, we will uh, carry on our, all our activities uh, using this development environment. For the exam, you will also submit everything using uh, this development environment. But then maybe you're just curious on how, how to, you know, uh, use your application in a real uh, environment. So on an actual web server and so on, in the cloud or wherever, not on localhost, okay? And I, tr I, I will try to, to give you some advice on this at the end of the course. But this is just, uh, you know, like the appendix, okay? So for us, uh, in short, it doesn't change anything. It's just for deploying on a, an actual web server. Okay. Um, we need to have a, a routes component, and each view should have a route component, component that specifies both the URL path and what you would like to show, okay? So that's a minimum set of uh, attributes that you should uh, um, um, set up for route. So say to which path, it, uh, which path uh, um, corresponds to this route and which element should be shown in terms of React component on that path, okay? And you will typically have something like this, slash, that's the home or the table or whatever that we have in our page. And maybe news or as we say, add, and this could be the form, okay? News, the news feed and so on. So for each route, the, typically there will be a component, a React component that decides what to show, okay? Remember that you can only have one here, because it's the root of a component tree, okay? But this is not a limitation. If you would like to have two, you just wrap them uh, into a, a React fragment and that's all, okay? Or, or you write a, an additional component that just returns the two, okay? Um, okay, the router will render uh, um, if 
um, the, we, uh, the route that is the best match for the URL, okay? So these are the rules. So in short, the most specific uh, 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 path will be used when deciding which component should be shown, okay? So if you have a slash, slash docs or something, slash users, a slash contact, you don't just render slash because there's a slash in the beginning. You see if there's something else after slash. And if you match something, of course, you use uh, that route, okay? So uh, let's say you, s you, s you have a slash, uh, slash user slash uh, 10, okay? So the first root will match, and the others will not, because it doesn't start as slash users. It starts as slash doc, as slash contact, and so on. And the slash, it's true, it starts with slash, but it's more generic than slash users, okay? So you just need to decide uh, these uh, URLs and, um, you know, find an, uh, a reasonable way to define strings that which, which corresponds to the path you are interested to create, okay? As you can see here, you can uh, define a, a path in a very generic way. So it can be fixed, of course, that's the easiest. Contact us. It will match only contact us and nothing else, okay? But you can also use the wildcard, so the star means it match anything. So everything that is docs slash anything will match, okay? And users slash something means that it matches users slash a value, any value, but not with additional other values, okay? Um, we will have these uh, rules uh, afterwards on the, in the slides, okay? So we just need to remember that the most specific route will be selected by the route. Only one route can be selected because we cannot show two components <laughs> together if you know, the, the, the developer has not decided how to put them together. Okay, so only one route will match. Options, uh, the routes uh, are typically not case sensitive. Uh, you can change the default, but it's recommended not to change this option, okay? As usual, <laughs> try not to change the defaults unless we, we tell you, but just because they are typically reasonable defaults, and um, we, don't, uh, we, we don't want to have, uh, you know, docs uh, uppercase matching something and docs lowercase matching something else, okay? It's probably we would like to have a different name if there are two different type of docs, like uh, private docs and public docs and whatever, okay? Avoid this, uh, you know, uh, different match depending on the case. It's always uh, uh, risky in terms of bugs. Okay, roots can also be nested. And this is very convenient because sometimes uh, um, uh, you would like to, let's say, start with, a, with a, a certain name and then have different values after the f this first name uh, that, ma uh, that uh, corresponds to different views, okay? And this is the nesting of the route uh, component. Uh, the path will be concatenated and the parent uh, um, uh, route will browse recursively through all the matching paths. And in short, the same procedure is applied, just that, just that uh, uh, the parent route is the first part of the route and the rest is looked, in into, uh, looked for in the children, okay? Uh, if we find matching children, okay, that's fine. But how can we say that uh, we need to put the children components inside the component if the component is the one that is matched by the uh, root that is the parent root? There's a special component which is called outlet that we can use in this parent component to say this is the place where the children components will uh, be shown, okay? We will see an example uh, with this uh, um, uh, functionality uh, later. That is the one that we will develop in the classroom, okay? And for your lab as well, probably you should try to use this approach. 
it's not mandatory, but uh, this is to avoid to do copy and paste of the same code in different places, okay? Think in terms of you have a layout, like you have uh, in the lab, you have uh, a menu on the left, and you would like to change what is in the right part, okay? The menu on the left could be the parent route, the, in the component the parent route, and what is on the right part, the main part of the application could be the children routes, okay? And you need to combine them together, but you would like to write the left menu only once, okay? And this is a way to achieve this, uh, uh, this situation, okay? This is an example, but again, we will see it uh, live uh, when coding in the next hour and a half. So routes, route path uh, slash element layout. So that's uh, a component that we wrote now that we have a router that is uh, exactly as I was saying before. Uh, it's in charge of putting a navigation menu, a left menu say, uh, where you can select something and so on. And then you put outlet inside and all the routes which are nested inside the external route, we render here. Only one of these, of course. We cannot render two or more, okay? Just one, the one that is the best match for the route that is uh, on the, in the URL box of the browser, okay? So in short, this about, if we have a slash about, will go into outlet, okay? And will be rendered here inside outlet, okay? And if we change, we put slash dashboard, the rest of the layout will be rendered the same, in the same way, but we will have another component, dashboard, not shown here, that will be rendered in, instead of outlet here, okay? So, note that this uh, route doesn't close, you see, and it's closed here. So it means the other two, route and route, are nested, and these are self-closing, okay? So there's this uh, slash uh, uh, greater than sign, that is at the end, so they are self-closing, while the parent route closes only afterwards, so it nests all the other routes, okay? This is more than enough for our application, but of course the structure is flexible, and you can, you know, nest and nest more and more routes, but of course your application means that it will have many pages, and it will become, you know, big. Okay, there are a few special routes, uh, the index route, so you see there's no path, but just this keyword, index. So it's a child route with no path that renders in the parent's outlet at the parent's URL. So it's like the empty path, okay? And of course an empty path will only match if no other routes will match, okay? So like... Uh, in the previous case, if we have route index nested here inside the uh, red box, dotted box, of course this route index will match if you have a slash something, but slash, uh, uh, no, slash nothing, okay? Slash, uh, and that's all, okay? And will not render if you have slash about, slash dashboard, or slash something else, okay? It renders at the same place as slash, okay? Because you would, have, you would like to have something here in the place of outlet, even if you specify layout here. Because you don't have a way to specify the default uh, content of outlet out otherwise, okay? Otherwise, outlet is empty if nothing here matches, okay? And so that's a way to specify what, what, uh, what to put inside outlet in case no route match, and this is route index, okay? And uh, as you see in the example, it could be home or something like this. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, layout uh, route, uh, I mean, and this is more, uh, um, you know, wha what we saw before, okay? So if you use a layout route, you should use outlet and you should nest routes, okay? It's not actually a, a component uh, coming from uh, uh, the React route. 
Instead, the no match route is a special case where you specify as a path uh, an asterisk. Okay, so a wildcard, uh, that means any route will match. But uh, it has less priority than all the other more specific routes. So in short, it's a way to catch all the routes that have not been cached by all the other routes. And typically, this case is used uh, to show a component that says, uh, well, this route is not valid. Since, remember, the user can write anything here, right? So either we continue showing the home <laughs> content, or we can show you know, a, a page where we write, uh, sorry, this page is n was not found, uh, you know, go home or whatever. Okay, so how do we specify this with the router? We cannot just, you know, match anything. I mean, to match anything, the only way we have is to say, well, we would like to match anything, but this is the lowest priority in matching, okay? So it will only match if no other routes matches, okay? So it's like uh, this no match root path asterisk, okay? And uh, uh, yeah, no, it's no implementation. And in this no match, you return uh, h1 uh, uh, page not found, okay? Whatever you like. Okay, and the index instead is what is rendered in case we have slash, okay? Yes, that's a question. Uh, is there any different about security? Um, not really, not sure what you mean by security, but I mean, here we are on the client side. So, I mean, all the code is already on the client side. It's already rendering on the client side. So in short, you already have the possibility to, to access any, any content, <laughs> okay? So it's uh, just the way you present things to the user. But uh, if you do like us, we, we open the inspector and, you know, we go inside the JavaScript and have a look at what's happening, it's already there. So un unless you have some security, specific security concern, I don't know really what you mean by security. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, the user is always free to change this field as I did before. I mean, if you mean uh, routes that we cannot access or we can prevent uh, from accessing, I mean, this is the task from the server, okay? But in a single page application, the server is used to load content, okay? And on the client side, uh, if we use a route which is devoted to access content which is typically restricted, we could simply say, well, we don't have any content to show. Or if you access it, but you don't have the content because you were not able to load the content, the page simply will not show anything, okay? So in terms of restricting what we can write there on the top, we cannot do anything. The user is always free to go here and edit, okay? But when it, it, it does these things, it, first it reloads the application, and second, I mean, if the route does, don't exist, it's his problem. I didn't tell the user to type things in the URL box, okay? The only time at which the user types in the URL box is in the beginning. You usually type google.com. Sometimes it's already opened, okay? But then the rest is accessed through clicks and stuff like that. You're not supposed to go here and type stuff, okay? The only, the only maybe thinking more about your question, the only time at which uh, you access a URL directory is when you have a bookmark, okay? And again, that's the same problem as before. So you load an application uh, because that's what, that's what happens with this configuration. You always load the application regardless of the URL. You go to a URL that you think uh, it's restricted in your application, okay. I mean, your application will try to show this, uh, this URL and depending on the logic, it, it can simply say, you cannot access this stuff or maybe it tries to show you some content which typically will not have because uh, if uh, the security is uh, implemented correctly, 
on the server side, you will not be able to load this information when you go to the server and you try to load this information from your application. It's the server stopping you because you do, you're not authorized to load this stuff, accessing directly the application with this uh, URL. You should be, uh, you should have gone through like, uh, I don't know, pages like username, password, uh, setting some security information in the browser and then loading this information afterwards. But if you access this uh, URL directly, either you already have the security information, but so there's no security issue, okay? Because you already out are, you are already authorized or you access a URL, URL and uh, it was not, uh, um, how to say, um, you didn't think in terms of uh, accessing it through navigation at that point, and so your application, it depends on what your application do. Uh, either it shows you something like uh, this page is not found, or it shows you a list but an empty list because it doesn't have data, and so on. So it depends on how you decide to implement your application. But I mean, it, it's it's mostly on the developer, what, what the developer wants to do. I mean, does the developer want to handle all possible cases, uh, also uh, the cases that are not, uh, um, uh, let's say, thought about during the design process? So, like uh, user typing stuff, uh, and you would like to have a nice page for all this URL? or you simply don't care and uh, at worst you see empty pages because you don't have the data because you are not able to load the data. That's more or less up to you, okay? But it's not a security problem in the sense of uh, we should prevent uh, some URLs from being accessed because actually you cannot, okay, in short, because I can always go here and type, okay? I mean, the, the application could uh, redirect me on other pages, but the point is that if the data is already in the browser, it can be accessed by you know, looking at stuff here inside, okay? Either in the console here, in the, in the inspectors and around, okay? And if the data is not there, it's a, a server's problem not to provide your data if you're not at authorized. That's all, okay? We will talk about uh, authentication, authorization, and all this stuff in the last part of the course. But it's a mm, nice question to, to, mm, you know, to understand now. Uh, the fact that basically routes are managed by the application if the user doesn't touch the URL field. But if the user wants to use a specific URL, well, you should have thought about this if you would like to have a, a consistent experience. Or simply something will happen and, the, the, uh, and something will be shown by the application and uh, without showing anything uh, particularly significant, okay? Or sensitive, I mean. Okay. So if we change the location URL, the router will uh, know that we did this operation, either through the code from the application or by typing in the URL box as we did before. And um, simply, uh, we need to handle this, uh, this situation, okay? And it means that in the router, we should have specified that the new URL and it should be handled by some components in our application, okay? So let's think in terms of uh, everything is working correctly. Uh, we have two options to load new URLs inside the code of the application. Use a link, okay? The link is a component provided by the React router. Or use a hook and uh, get a function, JavaScript function that can be called with the new URL that we would like to load. Okay? Never, never use a plain hypertext link, A, anchor, okay? Never use it. It shouldn't be present in your single page application. If you need something like this, it's because you need a link, okay? Which does exactly the same. It appears exactly the same as the 
anchor link. Okay? And also, for submission, you should you are allowed you are allowed to use forms but you need to remember that you should never reload the application because if you reload the application you lose the application state okay so we already saw the form we implemented last time but the thing we did is prevent the fault you remember that um where's the prevent the fault in the form no uh, uh, no, that's a context. Uh, form, prevent a fault, okay? It's not forbidden to use forms, just remember that you shouldn't submit the information to the server because this reloads the page, okay? Uh, okay, I... Um, yeah, so ju this is just the example and then we will stop for the break. You need a link? No problem, link. Okay, instead of A, you put link. This is a, a way of simulating the links uh, as in normal web pages uh, that should reload uh, the page. But here with the React router, it will not reload the page. It will simply tell the router, I would like to go to another URL. Okay, that's a link. Or sometimes, this is a component, so it needs to be included in the return something with the React element tree. Sometimes you need to write uh, this instruction in the event handlers, okay? And in the event handlers, you cannot put uh, React components. React components are the return value of the functions that implement the component and cannot be used in other places, I mean, to act as uh, things to be rendered, okay? Can be stored, but cannot be rendered. They are rendered by React. And so in this case, you get from the use navigate hook, which is a hook available once you import the React router DOM, uh, you use this function and you just tell this function, which is the new URL that you would like to load, okay? And the router will load the new URL. That's all, okay? So I think we can uh, break, uh, uh, since it's uh, half past two now, and 10 minutes break, I think it's fine. And we will finish talking about router and then we will see, as usual, an example, introducing the router in our lecture example, the, the answer list. Okay, no questions? So we'll see in 10, 10 minutes.